Welcome to Moon Harbor Heroes. Today's issue is Hellspawn, Issue 2, Children of the White Death. On the cover, we see Faye and Supai sitting on opposite sides of the interior of a van. Behind them, in the middle of the cover, we see a burly biker dude with solid black eyes staring vacantly ahead. Stained glass from Faye and fire tendrils from Supai interweave to create an image of Faye's demon. We turn the page and our story begins. We've got the three of you in the back of the van, uh, and it starts to move. And you kind of have a moment here, and you, you're taking a closer look around, and the the biker is just staring directly at a wall. They're definitely sitting in a position where they can see the whole van, but like their pupils don't move whatsoever. Like they're stock still, except for like bumping along with the road. And uh, you notice on a like sewn into the uh, collar of their shirt the symbol for the cult of the White Death. Supai is uh, sitting on a bench like across from you. Uh, kind of looks up, meets your eyes, and then uh, like whispers, "Pretty sure they can't hear." I shake my head ever so slightly as I look around the van to see if there are cameras or mics or anything. You don't see anything. Looking around, you don't see anything. Is there any reason you'd be able to like search deeper? We're in a new scene. Did my uh, held question from the assessment situation earlier go away? I'd, I'd l- I'll let you use them, but like, is there a reason you would notice? Like, you know, do you have the experience to know what you're looking for? With them? No, not at all. I know the cult, and I know that they are sneakier than we give them credit for. Yeah, yeah I mean, you don't see anything. Uh, you can use those questions, but I don't. I think the best you're going to find there is you, you don't find the evidence of anything. I want to ask, what here can I use to make sure we won't be heard? You've noticed some kind of connection between you all's power. There may be a way to communicate through it. Even though I don't have access to my powers right now because of the bracelets? Handcuffs? Ah, yeah. I'm going to keep the same answer, but say, but you'd probably need the bracelets off first to try. Uh, I'm going to look at Supai and like gesture for the bracelets and be like, silently like, hey, think you can do something with this? They uh, kind of follow your eyes. They kind of glance over at the biker. And, they get, and then they just whisper. I mean... I, I still don't think they can hear, but they can definitely see. I'll take care of it as soon as I can. They've been trying to get me for a while now. They keep talking about some kind of checkup, and I don't know. I think this might be the opportunity to figure out what's going on and maybe stop them coming after. I'm going to kind of like lean in, not like super far, but like into the aisle between us and be like, do you see that symbol on their neck? Carved into the collar. Yeah, or, sorry, yeah, the collar there. They've all had that. I don't know what it means. They're part of a cult. It's called the Cult of the White Death, and um, they're trying to bring a demon into the world to wreak havoc and general destruction. I know what they want with me, but I have no idea what they want with you. I don't know. This is the I think third time I've run into them in the last couple weeks. I got away the first two times, but. Have they been coming after you? Uh, not in so many words. I would say uh, more the opposite. At this point, the van hits like a pretty big bump and then takes like a steep downward angle. Like, you're definitely going deep into something. Are the windows blacked out or is it like a cargo van where there are no windows? Yeah, there's windows on the back, uh, but they have been painted over. Uh, solid. Um, so when we hit that bump... I'm going to take the opportunity to, like, fall in and, like, accidentally hit the um, biker and see if he reacts at all. How are you hitting them? I'm, like, when I feel myself go slightly airborne with that bump, um, I'm going to, like, kind of flail and just kind of, like, hit him with my shoulder as I fall. Okay. Supai kind of reacts to this as well, seeing you kind of exaggerate this bump and ends up, like, laying in the aisle. The biker just puts his hand up and shoves you back into your seat. And as Supai is like pulling themselves up out of the aisle, they reach up um, and grab your cuffs. And then you feel an intense amount of heat coming out of their hands. And they like pull themselves up using your cuffs and then sit back down. Uh, Looking down, you could see like seared burn marks in the middle of the cuffs and the lights have gone off. 
They're still locked on your arms, but they're no longer nullifying your powers, and you can probably easily break them off. Great. I'm gonna... Yeah, I don't want to do this, but I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna toss uh... one other thing in there before you decide what to do. Uh, as Supai, like, settles back in their seat, they look at you and they say, I think we should wait till we get it wherever they're taking us. I want to wanna know where, the, where they come from. And I will say that the biker has had absolutely no reaction to anything that you all have said. The chain um, going to his collar is like going like through the the partition to the front seat. I'm gonna see, and I don't know if I can. I'm gonna see if I can like, telepathically connect with them. Okay. So I'm gonna look at Supai and like think really loudly. Alana's kind of like, "This is ridiculous. I can't believe I'm doing this." But it's gonna be like, "Okay, can you hear me?" Cool. Go ahead and unleash your powers. And because I did the assess the situation, I've got a plus one forward on yep. that. So that's uh, cool. That's an 11. Okay. Uh, I have an idea of what this looks like on the page, um, if you're cool with that. Yeah, take it away. So what are you thinking real hard? Can you hear me? Okay, so I think we see like a thought bubble with those words. And then we get like a panel of you like squinching your face and like, concentrating real hard and the thought bubble kind of like forms into just a fragment of glass with those words etched on it and that fragment zips across like into supai's mind and we see their eyes just kind of light up and a moment later we see like the same like piece like a glass fragment but scorched edges um with yes uh fly back into your head am i gonna have to unleash my powers to do that every time no. I am, or can I just, like, assume that we've made a connection and we can just pass messages yeah. back and yeah. forth now? Like, if you're at an extreme distance or if there's extenuating circumstances, yeah, I might make it. But as a casual thing, yes, you can now just make... You know, if you're nearby, you can tell me that you just want to be talking through your mind. I'm going to be like, earlier, your powers... There was a moment where they looked like glass, kind of like my powers do. What, uh... Um... Yeah, we... What was that? They frown and um, send back. Yeah, that's not normal. Normally it's just fire. What are you What are you doing to me? I send back. I don't know what's going on. I can't do this with anyone else. There's something... Something feels similar between our powers. Do you... I send do you dot dot dot. And then another like mirror shard is do you know how you got your powers? And then I send that one over. They sit very still for a moment, and then we just get a um, shard back that says, no, they just started showing up. The powers just started showing up. I frown, and I'm like, damn, never mind then. And then I'm like, what else can you do? Supai gets like this really big grin as the uh, van pulls to a stop, and uh, the last shard they send you just says... I think we're gonna. I'm gonna get to show you soon. I roll my eyes and I'm like, "Just be careful, kid." I like to imagine you send a shard of glass with the roll eyes emoji. I like that as well. Okay. Um. So the van is pulled to a stop. The biker starts standing up. He's walking towards the like door at the back of the van, obviously with the intent to like grab you both by the cuffs around your or by by your arms and pull you to the door. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to use my memory manipulation and make him think that uh, Supai's cuffs are currently still connected. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and unleash your powers. So, like, the biker grabs you by the shoulder, and then, like, we see this flash as you swiftly... Uh, yeah, we get a panel where he looks down at Supai's um, hands and clearly sees them still connected, and, like, sees the lights on on both of your sets of cuffs, and then we get a panel of, like, the reality of it. He grabs you both by the shoulder and starts leading you towards the door, which opens. There are several armed guards. What are the, like, standard interior guards' uniforms look like for the cult? Uh, yeah, so they wear very, very white suits with that same, like, logo in sewn into the collar, embroidered into the collar in pink, like, on the lapel. And underneath the white suits, they have, like, harnesses with weapons attached. Usually like a teaser, a gun, that kind of thing. And then underneath that is like a, a shirt. Okay, cool. So there's like four of the like standard guards, and then there are four guards that are a bit 
better equipped. They they have um, similar styled body armor on and are holding like full rifles. So we've got like eight guards there to escort you out. And the man in the suit says to them, uh, take them to the checkup rooms. We need to check their progress. Um, your shoulders are then you know, transferred to the guards and they start leading you off to a, a door. What are you doing? Are they taking the same going door? Along. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to message Supai, shoot uh, them a thought bubble, and be like, by the way, I'm Faye. Yeah, and they send back Supai. I say, play along, don't be stupid, let's do this. I think our next panel, you've gone down a few hallways. The room you, st- you stopped in um, seemed to be like part natural cave, part like parking dock built into the natural cave. But it, the hallway opens up into a really high-tech, very sterile-looking um, complex. Walking through, there's a lot of hallways with large windowed walls showing various laboratories. Uh, you also like come across a couple rooms that seem very out of place and that they're full of arcane objects and magic sigils and like old uh, tomes. And they just seem very out of place in an otherwise incredibly like uh, high-tech, sterile environment. And the two of you are led into a hallway that has you know, three like small rooms on each side, once again, full glass walls. Um, each of them is like a small examination room. Think like high-tech version of your local doctor examination room. And uh, you're put into rooms on opposite sides of the hall. Um, the four heavily armed guards stand outside the doors, just keeping watch. Um, the other four continue down the hallway. This whole time, you've been noticing one like typing instructions into a pad, you know, basically alerting people of your arrival, getting things in motion. You're told to wait and that your examinations will begin soon. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say we're in the same room or we're in different rooms? You're in different rooms right across the hallway from each other. They're full glass wall, you can fully see each other. Can we still message each other through them? Yeah, sure. Uh, cool. I'm not going to say anything right now, I just wanted to check. I'm going to be like, you okay over there? Uh, Supai is like, very obviously just looking around the room, opening drawers, looking in- into everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting a little nervous though, this is a lot better finance than I thought it was. Uh, I'm going to send back. Don't worry. If you're here, they have a vested interest in you, and they're not going to hurt you much. But you will walk out of this alive, I promise. And I'll be right here in case anything happens. Go and hold and head and roll. Okay. That's a seven. On a seven. On a hit, they hear you. They mark potential clear condition or shift labels if they open up to you. You can see, even at the distance, like they're, they kind of give a little sigh of relief. They're like, good. I, I haven't told my mentor what's going on. I, I wanted to be able to handle this one on my own. Come to them and tell them about it once I took care of it all. So, he, I don't have backup on this one if I go missing. Uh, I send back, I do. And you do now, too, because you're here with me. They smile. And then... uh. So, like something seems to catch their eye and they kind of like look off down the hallway and they're like at an angle seeing something like your side of the hallway farther down the way the other guards went that you cannot see and they say hey that that room's labeled record that might be useful do you uh think you can get there they kind of like walk over to the door and like jiggle it a bit and it's clearly locked all four guards kind of turn and like look at uh, look at them and they're still like kind of holding their hands together as if it's all handcuffed I'm going to, by the way, I'm going with the, the role you made earlier. It's just kind of affecting everyone uh, with these cuffs. Perfect. I just don't want to have to keep on doing it. And they say, um, if I t- get out of here, it's going to cause a lot of noise. Maybe, maybe I can distract them. You can, you can get into the room and then we can get out from there. There's only four. I can take them. I think that might work, but I need you to distract them for a second. Let me know when. Three, two, one, go. I, I'm going to have you guys enter battle against the dangerous foe again here. So I think we are sitting on one team currently. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are again the leader. Great. Um, you do have influence over every teammate. Yeah, they're definitely giving you influence after that whole conversation. What is your purpose in the fight? Get to the records room, get the information I need, 
Getsupai and myself out. Yeah, then go ahead and add a team. Cool, so we're at uh, four now. Any mistrust? Nope. And are you off prepare, ill-prepared or off balance? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think you're better prepared. The whole handcuff thing, so. You're better prepared than they think you are. Cool. So, um, Tupai turns their back to the um, uh, guards. The guards kind of, like, are leaning in, trying to figure out what's going on. And then a swarm of uh, fire tentacles, like, burst in their chest, and they spin. And you s- clearly see the tentacles, like, forming into a fiery version of your demon's face. And it, like, growls at the guards. They all jump back. What are you doing? I it's actually am- a little... Shakes you a little bit, because, like, it is very clearly your deal. I'm only going to be shocked for, like, half a second, and then I'm going to portal into the records room. Okay. Good. Tell me what it looks like. Uh, yeah, so as all the guards turn their back, the air behind me, or the air in front of me, shatters into the broken glass. And through the broken glass, you can see the records room, right, ne- right the door next to me, essentially. I step through it, and then I'm into the room there. I'm going to add one small detail. Um, yeah, absolutely. In the moment that the like that you can see through the record room, we get like a single panel of like AM from the side, basically as if she was walking through the record room and just about to walk out of view of the portal when the portal opens. We just get like a split second shot of her like stepping away from the portal. And obviously she's not gonna be there when you jump through. Yeah, but Alana doesn't know that, and Alana jumps through. You're standing in the middle of the record room. It's well lit. You can see the like glow of fire um, from the window uh, on the other side of the room. You know, from down the hallway, from what Supai is doing. A quick glance around, like there aren't many obvious places to hide, and you do not see AM. There is a collection of like shelves with some homes, like you know, and there is also a uh, computer terminal. Uh, great. I'm gonna. Is are there any other like record like uh, printed records anywhere, or is it just the computer terminal? There's um various books and tomes. Uh, those seem to be either those all seem to be handwritten. They're fairly thick tomes. Uh, I'm gonna grab. How many could I carry in under one arm? A couple, like one or two, or uh, two or three. Sorry, they're fairly large tomes. If you want to do a quick search of the tomes, let me know like the topic you're searching for, and we have a move for that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to look for anything on um, the White Death or demonic possession in general. Go ahead and roll plus superior. Fuck me, Dad. All right. You find a tome labeled Fey, and flipping through that tome, the entire thing is just redacted. It is, it's a large tome. There is very clear, like, medical examination reports. There's very clear, like, large amounts of handwritten written stuff, but 99% of it is redacted. Um, also, you are leaving some kind of incriminating clue behind here. Do you have an idea now? We can do that now. If not, we can figure out what it is. Like. Uh, yeah, so I have the tome open on the desk as I'm looking at it. And my emotions are getting angrier and angrier as I'm uh, reading this tome and like looking through the redacted pages. And my hand involuntarily goes into a claw and just slices through the corner of the desk. Excellent. Excellent. We hear an increase in shouting um, and the glow of the fire is getting brighter and dancing more in the background. You don't really know what's going on, but things seem to be escalating down the hall. Um, what are you doing? Do I have a sign to look for a tome about Supai? Is there one for him as well? You can, or for you them can, as well? You can take time to search for, yeah. You, don't know, you know things are escalating, you don't know it to what level, so it's up to you what you do. I'm going to look for... You can also uh, search on the computer. Uh, is the computer logged on, or would I have to like hack in? Taking a quick through, uh, look through, you're, you seem able to access a good deal of records. Um, there are some you're running into you can't, but there is a- information available. Great. Is there a printer? Um, let's say there's just like an array of flash drives. Solid. I'm going to stick a flash drive in and just like do a quick search for any files labeled Supai or Fay, 
And then I'm going to just like upload them to flash drive before I pull it out and then run and help. Okay, cool. Go ahead and give me one more superior roll. Can I say, since I'm not helping them, that I can spend a team if this goes badly? You can cool. take the extra time, which will kind of make that situation more dire. Great, like, I'm going to take the extra you time. You hear Supai shouting for you, and like you could choose to ignore it. So, Yeah, I'm going to ignore it for now. Okay, that pushes it up to a seven. So you finish copying a large bit of information. There's a couple other large files um, on each of you. You haven't really been you know, looking through the information. You've just been grabbing, dropping. And the screen starts flashing red and goes into a security lockdown. You quickly pull out the, uh, the thumb drive. And right as you do, that port starts sparking, um, uh, shooting out sparks. You know, self-destructing and destroying anything connected into it, but you get the thumb drive out. Down the hall, you start hearing um, gunfire going off. What are you doing? I'm going to run into the hallway, and then I'm going to memory manipulate everyone in there to show that uh, Supai and I are running down the opposite direction. Okay, so you turn down the hallway. When you get there, you've got the uh, two of the guards that were holding, like, that are, you know, the more heavily armored are laying on the ground, seemingly unconscious. One of them is uh, missing a hand. The glass to the examination room um, that Supai is in is um, shattered. Um, Supai is like crouched down behind uh, the examination table, uh, and they seem to be bleeding from the shoulder. They, there's still some flame tentacles like whipping around, trying to push the other two guards off. And you can see uh, uh, four of the less armored guards heading down the hallway towards you. So go ahead. Um, they all spin to see you and unleash your powers. Uh, condition, or do you want it to be unstable or temporary? I'm going to mark a condition. Okay. So all of I'm them... I'm definitely angry right now. Excellent. Uh, they all like turn to see you, and then they start firing where they're seeing you run past them. And they all book down the hall. One of them grabs a walkie and uh, yells something into it. There's an alarm goes off. The lights start flashing red. And an art alarm echoes through. But the hallway is fairly empty at the moment. So they start running past me? Yeah, back the way you all came. I am going to... uh, And that's only the four guards, not all six of them. That is all eight guards. Oh, sorry, all six guards that were there. Yeah. The hallway is... Like they're heading out of the hallway. It's going to, in a moment, just be you and Supai. Uh, I'm going to run. I'm going to grab Supai. And then I'm going... Uh, is anything on fire currently? Small amounts. Nothing that's going to, like, spread. Great. Uh, I want to grab something that's on fire, go to the records room, and burn the tomes. If, the, if there's a Supai one, I want to take that. And the Fey one I'm taking with me. But anything else I'm burning. All right. Uh, Supai, you know, you grab the Fey tome. Uh, Supai quickly looks through and finds one with their own name and grabs it and sees what you're doing. Uh, sees you like using this like bit of rags to start a fire. Oh, okay. This well, this one's for me. Uh, steps back and then shoots out the tentacled demon face and it just erupts the room into flames. Great. Um, since we're stealing things and I had lit a small fire, would you say that counts as a... Uh... Small crime or a misdemeanor? Uh-huh. Great. I'm going to unmark Hopeless, because uh, the events that I took the other day was um, uh, blowing off steam from the Reformed playbook. If you commit a small crime or a misdemeanor, a victimless crime, uh, you get a clear condition. Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to look at Supai so, and be like... Supai like, steps back into the hallway, away from the heat of it all. She goes, so... Are you just going to change all my powers? I've never seen that face before. I think we have some reading to do, I say. And then I put my hand on their shoulder and portal us into my sanctuary. Okay. So just one doom for that. I think I want to continue the scene right as we land and immediately hug them and be like, we did it. We got more information. We're okay. They uh, hug you back and they start, they break out into another big grin go. See? We had it under control. Would that be a sharing your triumphant celebration? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to spend one from the team pool to clear a doom sign. Okay. Or clear a box of my doom track. 
Because the next um, thing that I want to do is I want to open both of our tomes. I want to put my hands on them. Before and I want to do that. I'm going to have them also share church triumphant celebration. Oh, great. And they're going to, um, they look at you and they kind of step back a, a bit and go, so did I, did I do well? I give them a giant hug and I'm like, you did incredible. Okay. Um, I've got some, uh, some books about first aid, but also my mom is a professor and could probably get that. Is it a bullet hole? Is that what's bleeding? Yeah, there is clearly a bullet in their shoulder. We should probably get you bandaged up, but I've got something I want to do first. Okay. Go ahead and set the scene. So the cot that I was laying on, I have them like laying down on it. And we get the introduction of my mom for the first time, because I've texted her. It's going to be a short time jump, if that's cool. Yeah, perfect. And we're going to see the books. Um, so my mom will be like taking care of them. I am sitting in my meditative spot, and the tomes with my name and Supai's name are floating around me. And I want to access a dark vision to uh, get some information from those tomes and try to see like what's reacted. Not all of it, because I can only ask one question, but I want to uh, get as much as I can. What, are your, what does it look like when you do your dark visions? Is it the shards of glass aesthetic as well? Um, it looks like my eyes kind of go pink. And then uh, we get essentially panels that look like they are the shards of glass, um, but it's like thought bubble shards of uh, shards of glass. And uh, I'm in like then we see me like step into one, and it's usually scenes from the past, like see a uh, like vision of past events kind of thing. Okay, cool. So we get these swirling glass, and it's just medical tests and notes and just like the full unredacted scripts of both books. Uh, and these are all just flying around you. Like readers could read bits of it, but there's not like enough to like get anything out of any one particular bit. Um, go ahead and ask your question. And then we're going to frame the, uh, the scene. How are Supai and I connected? Okay. So we get a focus on um, several of the medical texts from like Supai's creation and there's like we see lines of like with the loss of the prime project and etc cetera, etc cetera, you know new avenues meet, need to be explored and then we see infant supai on a like medical table that has a like elaborate sigil on the table itself and we see like an iv put into them transferring this glowing liquid and you you see the, like, this is all being done by doctors with the cult insignia on their collars and such. You're left with the knowledge that Dupai was created because you disappeared. They were the further projects of the cult upon losing their prime project. Great. Uh, two questions. In that um, scenario, were there any other infants? Did I see only Supai, or did I see, like, a couple people? I'm not going to say you saw any other people, but on the, like, table, with Supai's file, um, during this procedure, you can see neatly stacked several other files with um, labels on them. Great. I just want to set that foreshadowing up for the audience. And then, um, cool. I'm going to come out of it, and I'm going to go over to Supai, and I'm going to be like, hey, Mom, can we have a second? Um, when, you, when you come out of it, um, Supai is on their phone. Um, they're kind of like standing off to the side, like talking quietly into the phone. And you hear, yeah, yeah, no, I understand it's serious. No, no, I understand. I know, I know there's things we have to do. Uh, I'll be back soon. And they hang up and kind of look at you like, I, I gotta go. I take their phone from their hands and put my number in. And I say, if you ever need anything, call me. And we should get coffee next week because uh there's some stuff i need to tell you okay yeah no thanks it's it's good to meet you they i give them a hug and i'm like they they clasp you really tight during the hug there's a bit of kind of desperation in that hug for a moment before they draw back and then i think we get a panel of them like heading to the door and then like looking back at you for a moment and then heading out. I watch them go and I turn to my mom and I, 
Hey. Hey, Mom, can I borrow your computer? I've got some research to do. Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and T.P. Huth and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator On Air, a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. They can be found at T. Huth Playwright on Twitter or T.P. Huth 94 on Instagram. This issue was GM by me, Anthony Sheets, and Faye was played by T. Huth. The music for this issue was Halls of the Undead by Kevin McLeod. A link to the license and his website will be in the show notes. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or on Patreon at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or on Twitter at moonharborcast. If you enjoyed this issue, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes and recommending it to friends. Word of mouth is really the best way for us to bring these stories to more people. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue.